What is it? More brutes? Worse. Unless you're a Mega Constructs fan, that is, who's been waiting an absolute age for the return of the Flood. I'm Brickman117, and this is the Floodgate Firefight from Mega. In 2022, Mega put the fate of the galaxy in our hands by way of fan vote. They provided us with concept art and a very brief description for four potential sets that they could potentially create. All we had to do was vote for our favourite, and then the winner would then be designed and put into production for a targeted fall 2023 release. And so we're a little early, but it's here. Your fan vote winner, Floodgate Firefight. The set comes with 633 pieces, has been given the set number HNC59, and a suggested age rating of 13+. plus. In regards to figures, you get the Master Chief himself, and for the Flood, you get Elite Combat Forms, Tank Forms, and a whole host of Infection Forms. The build itself consists of a small section of the Traxxas Factory, as seen in Halo 3, as well as a number of smaller side builds. On the front of the box, you can clearly see displayed what's inside the box, as well as the Fan Vote winner insignia, as opposed to the Halo Infinite or Halo Universe series insignias. On the top of the box, we once again get that huge new Mega logo along with some great images of some of the figures that are included in the set. On the side of the box, you can see some great artwork with the Chief just reorganising some of those combat form elites. And on the other end of the box, you've got the customary Master Chief. It is the Infinite Master Chief, but I don't care. I think it looks nice on the shelf when it matches all the other sets. You also get a smaller image of the display set all nicely laid out just below him. On the back of the box, you once again get a good view of the build, along with the names of the characters included in the set, as well as some demonstrations of the interactive features included in the set, and also an internal view of the actual control area for the crane in the build. And on the bottom right of the box, you see some current and future sets available from Mega, including the new Elephant Sand Nest. Opening up the box couldn't be easier thanks to Mega's latest box design. You've just got the two sealing tabs, one either side, and then the box opens very satisfyingly, causing no damage to the box whatsoever. This is great for collectors like myself that like to keep their boxes in good order, but also for people that maybe don't have the room to have all of their sets out on display at once. If you want to then break your set back down, you can store it in this box and it seals itself. It closes itself up really nicely so when you've got it back on your shelf you wouldn't even know that you've ever opened it in the first place. It's also worth noting that this box is surprisingly small for the amount of stuff in it. I opened this box and went through everything that was in there and then I went to put it back into the box to carry it into another room. I can actually put it all back in and still close the box. It only goes in in a certain order. I think that comes from, although this is a 630 piece set, a vast majority of those pieces are very large, larger than what you would usually get in a ratio of a normal set. And speaking of pieces, we have so many great pieces in this set. If you're a mock builder like myself, this is a dream set. There are so many usable pieces and parts that you just don't generally get very often, like sandbags, traffic cones, the building structure, support beam type pieces. In regards to the instructions, there's a relatively hefty instruction manual with it that I had no problems following. There's also a little bit of artwork in the instructions manual as well, which is a really nice touch and a little bit of information about the actual fan vote itself. So let's get this thing put together. And so here it is all put together. Once again, your fan vote winner, Floodgate Firefight. I think it looks fantastic. First thoughts are on the build. It was a very simple build in one hand, but a very satisfying build at the same time. Most of the structure build is as it appears on camera. It's a relatively simple build. The forklift itself was probably the most interesting side of the build and took up a remarkable amount of parts of the 633 parts. That said, once again, a very satisfying build putting that together. And the end result, I think, looks absolutely fantastic. Exactly what we want. We've got a forklift and it looks like a really accurate representation of the forklift. In regards to the structure build itself, it's built modular and the reason for this is you can take it apart in three sections and you can reconfigure them however you like. And I haven't tried it yet. I do have some additional sets, so I will try it. But I'm guessing if you buy multiples of the sets, that can make it really interesting how many variations you can create using this set. And I'm sure it won't be too long before we start to see images pop up on the internet of people with three or four or five sets 
connecting all of these together. It's going to be really interesting to see what people can create using this set because after all it was done intentionally so people could do that. The Traxxas factory in Halo 3 is a huge level. This is just a very small representation of it so it lends itself very well to army building and I look forward to doing so. When it comes to detailing, Mega really did go above and beyond with this set and I was continuously pleasantly surprised throughout the build every time I saw something else that proved Mega was not going to do this half-heartedly. They wanted to give the fans what they wanted and they wanted to make sure they did a good job of it. And I'm not just talking about things like the printed console pieces or the printed keyboard pieces or even the skull easter egg or the fact that we get two traffic cones, two energy cores, a number of barrels, shipping crates, fuel cans, weapons crates, a whole row of sandbags, or even the excellent Traxxas Heavy Industries logo printed onto the side of the shipping crate, or even the fact that they bothered to print the side of the ammunition box, which is a nice little side build. They put UNSC printing on the side of this, which was completely unnecessary and nobody would have given it a second thought if it wasn't there, but they did it. It's absolutely fantastic. They also chucked in loads of weapons with this set as well. So there's no way you're ever going to be short of weapons with this set. But those aren't the details that I'm talking about. Those are all the obvious ones. The attention to detail that I'm talking about is how so many aspects of this build feel finished and not left half finished. These are the areas like the top of the structures that have these fantastic grid pieces on, which for a mock builder are absolute godsends. These things really make a mock complete. They didn't need to put these across the top of the structure. They could have just left the studs exposed, but no, they finished it off, even though it's right up the top of the structure. The amount of railing pieces like these railing pieces on the top of the crane. Once again, if they weren't there, you'd be none the wiser, but don't they make it look better with them being there? And on the ground, on the bottom of the structure pieces, it's all nicely tiled off with some yellow tiles to look like warning lines, which again, all of this could have just been left as exposed studs and we would have been none the wiser, but it just makes it look so much better as a final result. It makes it look more polished. Even the door. For the first time, we have an actual Perspex door. I don't think we've ever seen that in the Halo line. So if it wasn't there, we wouldn't have thought anything of it. But they've put it there anyway, and that's an additional piece that we can all use to make our own creations with going forward. So again, a very welcome addition. And another first, I believe, are these vent pieces, which are incorporated into the lower section of the factory wall. These can simply be pushed out in two sections. One section can't fully open in this configuration, but if it was in a different configuration, it would open. Again, I've not seen these pieces before. I think they're absolutely fantastic and going to come in really useful in the future. And then finally, we should take a quick look at the crane before we move on to the forklift and the figures. So the crane, as you can see, can be slid from side to side. It does get a little bit catchy on the tiles, but as long as you're careful with it and mindful, it moves relatively easily and has the desired effect. When it comes to the winch, again, the winch can be a little bit clumsy. The string comes all pre-tied, which was nice to see because you don't want to be faffing around trying to tie tiny little knots. To make it go up and down, you simply twiddle the spindle and it will go down. It doesn't go down smoothly, simply there's not enough weight there for it to do that. The way it's configured, it's just not possible. So you do have to rearrange it once it's down and once it's back up. But at the end of the day, this is a play toy, not a working winch. So I think the trade-off is perfectly acceptable. And so we move on to the star of the show, the forklift. I said earlier that this was probably the most involved and interesting individual aspect of the build. I know they created some new parts to create this forklift and I think they absolutely nailed it. It was well worth taking the time to get this right. It's got a number of bespoke printed pieces in it, which again will come in handy with future builds. And its functionality works very well too. The actual forks are a little bit flimsy on the underside, but I don't think there was much they could do about that. And that said, they do still lift up and down. And when they are in the up position, they're still capable of taking the load of the ammunition crate, which is fantastic. And obviously, whether the forks are up or down in motion, you can still trug this little thing along, even if it does have almost zero ground clearance, 
And that's what forklifts are like in real life too. To access it, you simply flip up the lid and then there is one space for a driver to be slotted in there. It is very cozy. The chief himself does fit in there. I won't faff around with it on camera, but trust me, he does fit in. There is no seat but there are two small control levers for him to hold on to. The crate itself is also a simple but nice and effective build, holding a number of grenades and weapons. Plus you get two printed tiles, one on either side. And one of the other side builds that we haven't mentioned so far is this small wall, which couldn't be simpler, yet couldn't be more effective. Wherever you put this down in your diorama, all you have to do is put the gun behind it and it looks amazing. I absolutely love these little wall sections and it's so good that they thought to add this to the set. Also the sandbags, another really nice detail for this set. Just drop the sandbags down wherever you like, put the gun behind it, boom, looks fantastic. Okay, it's figure time. Starting off with the infection forms, you get 10. You get two dark, four medium and four light. Having 10 in this set is just absolutely epic. Anyone that's army building this set is gonna end up with hundreds. Next up, we've got the two combat form elites. Now, although the figures are identical, they do come with different weapons. They are the newest version of combat form elites from Mega with the new articulation claw arm. It is on the large side, but the articulation you get, which gives you such flexibility when it comes to posing I think is well worth the trade-off. In regards to the colour, not seen this colour in Flood before. It's got a much more glossy goldy sheen to it. What you see on camera is pretty much what it looks like in real life. Next up the tank form. Now this is the same mould as the existing tank form mould that again we haven't seen for a very long time but it's got a fresh new paint job and it makes all the difference. No matter what angle you look at this figure from, it is absolutely fantastic. The different colours of green and off browns that they added to this tank form make all the difference. I've got the original one. I may do a comparison video at a later date, but trust me, this one wins hands down. It is absolutely epic. And I'm just over the moon to see tank forms in sets again. And then finally, the big guy, the chief. I'm a sucker for a chief figure and I always will be. And when it comes to chief figures, this one does not disappoint. Again, the paint effects that they've put on there from all of that flood goo that's splattered over his armor just makes this figure so unique. Yes, that's a downside. If you're gonna army build this set, you're not gonna want 10 of those figures, but that doesn't matter. If you don't want them, sell them. But for me, this has to be one of the best chiefs that they've produced in terms of detailing. And I had to pose him with his flamethrower because that flamethrower just looks epic. And once again, another weapon that you just don't see very often. So for those that haven't had it and have always wanted it, this is a great chance to get the flamethrower. It is slightly disappointing that it didn't come with the flame piece. Okay, for anyone that's already got one, you can just pop that in the end. But it would have been nice to, uh, to get that as a just final cherry on the top. And here it is with that flame piece attached to the flamethrower. And again, this flame piece does not come with this set. You'd have to have one of your own or find a set with it in. But I just wanted to show you how epic it looks when it's attached to that flamethrower burning up some flood. All in all, I'm very pleased with this set. And in many ways, it's exceeded my expectations. And as a long time fan of Mega Halo, I feel it's only right to thank Mega for one, giving us the opportunity to vote on this set and then doing such a good job executing it. The modulization of the structure units allowing customization was something I wasn't expecting, but definitely welcome. The effort they went to with the details on the figures is fantastic. And the only things that I'm slightly unsure of about the set are the fact that the brown they used for the rear wall is a different brown than that of the original Mega Flood sets. And although it still looks fantastic in this brown, it doesn't match the older sets, which isn't the end of the world, but I was kind of looking forward to seeing them all alongside each other looking like they matched. Whereas all of the colors in this set are slightly different, but that's understandable, times have changed. And in fairness, I think this may look better. So I think it's a step in the right direction. I think we'll just have to leave the past in the past. So as always, feel free to let me know your thoughts on this set in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.